we're so happy you could all be here to share this evening with us with two very exciting things that are happening actually today. My name is Vladimir von Surkin, I'm the director of the museum, and I'm extremely happy to present this exhibition to you, which could not have been possible without the wonderful commitment, enthusiasm, skill, and dedication of uh, my staff. So please, let's thank all of them for their hard work. <laughs>
So we tried to make this as local as possible, as festive as possible, but also as meaningful. The AIDS quilt, as you know, is an international memorial to those who have died from HIV and AIDS. And I am grateful, again, very grateful, for the American tradition of quilt making that inspired the quilt and that has made it accessible to family members, to friends, to co-workers, to community members who want to commemorate the people that they have lost. We requested panels that were specific to El Paso, and we hope that this inspires El Pasoans to create panels that commemorate the people they've lost and send them to the Names Project. Keep the memory alive. HIV and AIDS have often been thought of as a gay disease, but in the 21st century, it's a women's issue. Women of color, men of color, are the most likely to be infected at very high rates. And so we need to understand this affects all of us, the whole human family. And we all need to be allies to help stop this terrible disease. So thank you educators. Thank you HIV testers. Thank you parents and family and those living with HIV who never give up. And thank you to our community. We are stronger together. That's our mission, that's our motto, and we stand by that. Thank you. Some of you uh, may know that, my, that I did not grow up in El Paso, and that my academic background is also not in uh, border studies or Hispanic studies or regional history. And when I was interviewing for this position, uh, one of the people that I had to speak to and meet with was the assistant director of the Museum and Cultural Affairs Department, Ben Five. And of course, a lot of my questions circled around what are the possibilities at this museum? What, how far can we really push the boundaries that may be existing already? And um, how broad can the programming become? Because of course for me, that was something of, of great importance, uh, knowing what the opportunities are and, and bringing programming here that reflects the community, bringing programming here that attracts the community. And um, it's everything that I heard from Ben Fine was extremely supportive and, and of course also therefore led to, to uh, my decision to move my family here to El Paso and to work at this wonderful institution. And I would like now to introduce the Assistant Director of the Museums and Cultural Affairs Department and ask him to share some of his remarks with us. Thank you. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, I, I did not prepare a lot of remarks, actually. I will try to keep this very brief. Um, but I, I'm not sure how many of you realize how momentous this really is. Uh, to see LGBT stories and lives put in your local history museum uh, and acknowledged as such is a really big deal. This is the first time this has actually happened. And while we all know that there is no need for an institution to legitimize anyone's history, anyone's culture, anyone's stories, that's exactly what's happening tonight, and it definitely amplifies that. Uh, as a native El Pasoan who grew up here, who came to this museum uh, as a small child, and really saw that the story of this museum was very much the story uh, of the myth of the American West, and of Manifest Destiny, and white cowboys, uh, and Mexican, uh, Mexican settlers, and really much uh, about sort of a binary. To be able to see this museum starting to open up and decide that there are so many other stories that belong to uh, the story of El Paso, and they're so worthwhile to celebrate, to have on our walls. Uh, so for me, it's a really momentous occasion, uh, and it's really funny to me. I was thinking about this on the drive-in. I'm like, okay, we have the Names Project, uh, we have panels on the AIDS quilt, we're going to have photos from the, the original OP, and then we're going to have some film in there as well. And I'm like, it's kind of random, but it made a lot of sense to me driving in, and I'm going to explain why, at least in my mind. Um, for those of you who grew up here, or maybe grew up anywhere, really, uh, 
for decades, really the epicenter of life uh, and uh, as a gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender person was really your local gay bar. Uh, that was really where community happened. That's where you walked in and you saw other people like yourself because you didn't see them uh, oftentimes anywhere else in your community. They did not uh, have the luxury of living openly and you didn't see them in media. And so for me, it was really funny because I thought about this and before you were old enough to go to a gay bar, you had the solace of gay film. Films were where you turned to to see life as it could be for yourself. Uh, if you ever got out of your, you know, your little corner of the world or your bedroom. Uh, and as for a young man who, came, who lived here, grew up here, uh, and came out when I was 14 at boys' school, uh, films were really a solace. They really did provide a, a, an outlet for me to experience uh, what life could be like once I got out of a place where uh, it was routinely reported to me by you know maybe the other outcasts in, in class that there were you know four to five to six to twelve guys with baseball bats waiting for you outside of the locker room and where the principal or the priest would tell your parents what do you expect um, but what what you could expect is stealing your mom's minivan and driving to Messiah to the Fountain Theater and, and seeing some incredible films and knowing it did get better. And so for all of you here tonight, I want to thank you for coming out, for supporting this. Uh, I think we were a little afraid. We didn't know how many people would be here, but you're definitely validating that these stories are important. Uh, and the last thing I will say is how many people here are old enough to remember uh, putting together a fake ID to get into the yep. old Oh, yeah. <laughs> right here. Uh, here. Yep. Yeah, I actually had a uh, U-Rail bus pass uh, <laughs> that allowed me to get in. I know actually one of our staffers here was talking about uh, when she worked at Blockbuster Video, finding an ID that allowed her to access that world. And so seeing these photographs are really great. And to know that so, for so many of these people, their lives live on, what is remembered lives. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you for all of the staff here and our partners for making this possible. And happy Pride Month. Thank you.